So it's pretty obvious that Christians should set goals and make plans, right? But James 4 verse 13 to 15 says, Look here, you who say today or tomorrow we're going to a certain town and we will stay there a year, we will do business there and make a profit, how do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or do that. So goals or no goals. We're going to talk about what the Bible says about goal setting in this video, including biblical keys for goal setting. Welcome to Breathe and Bloom, where we talk about how to bloom, grow, and thrive in all areas of our lives. My name is Ashley, and today I'll be talking with you about biblical keys for goal setting and working towards our goals. And so the first biblical key is alignment with God's will and word. And I believe that is what the verses I read before in James 4 were talking about, as far as it is recognizing that God is sovereign and supreme supreme and that we are not entirely in control of our lives when it ends, when we're sick, when we're, you know, and so it's recognizing that God's will is above all that and that we need to be mindful of that when we're setting our goals. We need to make sure that our goals are in alignment um, within the parameters of God's word and his character. And so we'll talk about a couple verses that are related to this key of alignment with God's word and will. One verse is Psalm 127 verse 1, and it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, the builder labors in vain. Another is Proverbs 29 verse 18, and it says, When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. And so I'll pause to pose the question of whether you are receiving and accepting divine guidance as you set your goals, as you reflect on and revise your goals, and as you work towards your goals. Have you allowed space for God to speak and to direct, or have you taken it entirely in your own hands? The second biblical key that I like to talk about is forethought and planning. And so in case you wanted some extra evidence as far as whether Christians should set goals, I believe these verses in this biblical key provides just that. Yes, the Bible does say we should plan ahead and we should think ahead and we should work towards things. And that's exactly what the purpose of goals is. So have you done the appropriate homework before starting your task? Are you going and sewing and building by yourself or are you going, sewing and building with God? Now there are several verses that talk about this, but before we get there, I want to point out that this biblical key of forethought and planning really relates to the need to be systematic in working towards your goal and not just setting a goal and saying, yeah, I'm gonna do some stuff to hopefully get there, but in creating and using systems. And so if you haven't watched part two of the series, then you've been missing out. Part one talked about the smarter goal setting framework, and that is how to set goals that are attainable. And like I encouraged you before to reflect on whether your goals are within the parameters of God's word and will, that's actually a part of the smarter goal setting. It The R starts for reviewed or reviewable goals. And so review whether your goals are aligning with the smarter goal setting framework and review whether they're within the parameters of God's will. That's part one. And then part two, check whether you actually have systems in place or if you've identified the habits that are needed for you to actually set these goals well and not just that, but to work towards them, to actually make progress towards them. Again, coming back to this 
biblical key. It's forethought and planning. Make a plan, a systematic plan. Now, one of the verses related to this is Proverbs 24 and verse 27. It says, put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready. After that, build your house. It's saying you have this goal of building your house. I want you to do some things before you even do that actual house building. I want you to have a plan. I want you to have a system. I want you to work on certain things as you get so, there. Put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready. And then after that, build your house. Luke 14 verse 28 says, suppose one of you wants to build a, a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? Now the third biblical key for goal setting is faith. We serve a big God who can accomplish the impossible. There is nothing he can't do. We can choose to believe that he journeys with us and always has our best in mind. He is trustworthy and faithful. And it's important that as we work towards our goals that we recognize that we can in fact put our faith in God and we can trust that as we sow, he will bless and he will allow us to reap. Now, one of the verses that I want to talk about related to faith is Proverbs 3, verse 6. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding as far as the best strategy to use to make progress towards your goal. Lean not on your own understanding about which goals to set, but in all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Now, people attain lots of things without faith in God. But this verse is saying when you put your faith in God, he will make the path straight. You won't have to jump through the hoops and do less than reputable things to get where you need to go. He will make your path straight. The second verse related to this biblical key of faith that I want to share is Jeremiah 17 verse 7. It says, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. And let me tell you, I believe that I am all that and a bag of chips, okay? All that and a bag of chips. I've got some skills under my tool belt. I have some education, some degrees in my pocket. I have, you know, lots of characteristics that are useful for getting to attain goals. But regardless of all of this, I choose not to put my confidence in myself because greater is he that is in me than me and than everything that in, is in the world, including my skills and, and my accomplishments. Greater is he. And so I choose to put my confidence in him, to say, Lord, I am submitting to you. I am going to do the work that is needed and I am going to do it as unto you and I am going to trust that you are going to bless and bring it to fruition. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. Where have you placed your confidence? Is it in your hard work or is it in the one who is omniscient? The one who knows all, whose wisdom is far beyond yours and far beyond everyone else's. The one who is omnipotent, who is capable of doing all that is good. The one that is omnipresent. I choose to put my confidence in the one who is not only with me as I work, but who is at the end line, you know, and is able to bring it to fruition. Not just help me write the right words in the cover letter, but also there with the person who is going to read the letter to, you know, work on my behalf. That is where I choose to place my confidence. Now, the next biblical key for goal setting that I'd like to talk about is diligence. Goals often require hard work. We need to be committed and diligent in our effort. And one verse in the Bible that 
highlights this is Proverbs 21 verse 5. The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. So we get to choose if we want poverty or profit. We get to choose if we want to work in haste or to be diligent. All right. The next biblical key is perseverance. We will face setbacks and disappointments, but we need to persevere through rough times. We need to persevere through the times when our motivation is dimming. And I've shared a video about how to get things done even when you are not very motivated. Thankfully, we can pray that the Lord renews our motivation, renews our strength. Sometimes we just, we just gotta push through. We just have to persevere when we're tired and so forth we can choose not to give up. Now Hebrews 12 verse one to two says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of the key part to this is it says let's fix our eyes on Jesus and you know if our goal is in alignment with Jesus the closer we get to Jesus the closer we get to our goal right and so we can keep our eyes on Jesus who will renew our faith renew our strength will uh, bless our effort and while we're keeping our eyes on him and who he is then we are getting closer we're making progress towards our goal Ain't that good news? Good news. Second Chronicles 15 verse seven says, but as for you, be strong and do not give up for your work will be rewarded. Another verse is Philippians four verse 13. It says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. And finally, Habakkuk 2 verses 2 and 3, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that whoever reads it may run with it. Probably heard lots of people, including me, say you should write down your goals, write down your dreams, write down your heart's desires. And you've probably heard about vision boards and the benefits of that. I think one of the key reasons for writing down your goals and drawing or printing or cutting and pasting your vision is when your motivation is fading, you can look at it and that will encourage you to continue to run. So I'd like to leave you with this simple prayer from the Bible. It says, may God give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. I pray that today you will make time to reflect on your goals or to set some goals and to make sure that they're in alignment with the will and way of God. And you will reflect on your systems that you have, your habits, what you are doing to work towards these goals and to make sure that you've made space for God in the process that you are using these biblical keys. I pray that the Lord will remind you to lay aside all the weight, to remember that you don't have to do it on your own, so you don't need to be stressed, overworked, and tired, because his yoke is easy and his burden is light, and he is willing and able to work on your behalf, if only you allow him to. So I pray that you don't do it on your own, but you partner with him and that the peace of God will rule and guard your heart and your mind. Continue to breathe and to bloom. Until next time, take care.